Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. From today, we are going to start the series of grossing modules. Okay. Now, these grossing modules, they are very, very important for orientation of the first year MD DNB residents. Why it is very important? Because you need to understand what is your role as a pathologist, okay, while you are giving the grossing. Not only the first year, but also the second as well as the third year residents who are already giving the grossing. So it is very important for you. You might be making some mistakes, okay, and there might not be anyone to highlight those mistakes. So this is your only chance from where you can understand if you are making any kind of mistakes, okay. So grossing is very, very important and it is the first step in the histopathology, okay. And Grossing is, a, is, is an art of taking a very representative section and if you are not taking or not doing the grossing properly, then you might not be able to report that particular histopathological specimen, okay. So grossing is very important, okay, because you need to understand the concept of representative samples. Only when you give proper representative samples that you will be able to report a particular specimen, okay. So let us start today's topic of discussion. So what are the different things that we are going to discuss today? We are going to see the basics of grossing, okay, the introductory part, then the instruments that we are using, then we will see what are the different information that should be there in the surgical requisition form. So suppose if you are doing an MD pathology course and later on you want to open a particular laboratory. So you should understand that what are the different types of information that you need you know, when a patient is giving you or when a patient party is giving you a histopathological specimen for evaluation, then what are the rejection policies? What are some of the SOPs that you should keep in mind? Then the basic principles of tissue fixation, then how the photography should be done and what is the importance of documentation? We should understand that. Specimen orientation, again, it is a very, very important thing that we should understand. Then the different kind of margins, what is the radial margin, what is the shave margin, what is the indiv uh, you know, individual importance of such margins. Then how you should describe a particular specimen, description is very, very important. And what are the sections that you should give from a particular specimen, again that becomes very important. How you should, you know, you know, carry out or how you should safely carry out the grossing. You have to take in certain important, you know, safety aspects into account, which surprisingly none of the residents know. So I will tell you what are the must know things to take care of your own safety. And along with that, I have discussed waste disposal, not only with regards to the histopathology specimens or the grossing specimens and how to dispose of those specimens, not only with regards to that, but we are also going to understand waste disposal in general. Why? Because this is asked as a long answer question in your exams, okay? Rest all these important portions will be asked to you in your viva, okay, in your final practical examination. So pay a lot of attention in today's topic of discussion. So if you look at the introductory part, as I have already explained, it is the first basic step in surgical pathology and an adequately and correctly gross specimen will provide information which will help in the staging of the tumor. It will help to provide the information on the prognosis, helps in deciding the most appropriate treatment as well as it is going to help assess the response to therapy. It should be made sure to have an occupationally safe and environmentally friendly gross room. Okay, so let, let us see how the grossing room should be. Okay, and what are the things that should be there in the grossing room? So remember that the grossing table can either be ready made or it might be custom built according to the needs and the available space. So let me show you over here. So as you can see, this is a ready made grossing table as you can appreciate. But this grossing table might be very big for a particular available space in the hospital. So this might not suit you. So these are ready-made grossing tables, okay? But for example, sometimes as you can see, you can get a custom-made, you know, grossing table. Now, for example, as you can see, there are one, two, three stations over here back to back, okay? So sometimes you, are, you might be working in an institute which has a very high load. Just a single grossing table or grossing station might not suffice to meet with the day-to-day -day demands. So in that condition, you have to have a custom made grossing table to accommodate more number of individuals. Okay. So this is very, very important to understand. Okay. So your grossing room or the grossing table might either be ready made or it might be custom built according to the need and the available space. 
The other essential requirement is because you are working with the knife and you have to see the specimen very clearly as to evaluate all the borders, margins, the tumor itself. So you should have a very good illumination in the working area. And very importantly, you should have a very powerful exhaust system to extract the odors of the tissue as well as the formal vapor which is created over there. Okay, So you should have a separate fume hood that is going to absorb all the formalin vapors. You should remember that formalin vapors which is basically formed from the formalin which is used as a fixative. Now that is not only you know allergic or that is not only creating allergy for our respiratory system but they are also carcinogenic in agent and they are also irritant to the eye. So those of you who have worked in the crossing room you might corroborate with whatever findings that I am telling you right now. So there should be a proper exhaust fan in place. There should be writing boards should be there in the place because one person who is grossing then another person should be there with the writing board okay and that writing board should have place to hold basic stationery and as well as strong small instruments such as the scalpel blades. Now to avoid the formaldehyde aerosol that is the formalin should be transferred with an electric pump into an overhead formalin storage tank and dispensed into the working area. So for example if this is the grossing table. So what should happen that if you have made formalin, so that should be pumped electronically to an overhead tank and from there it should be dispensed okay, and then it should be utilized in that manner. Now such kind of a, an arrangement is found in very less institute. In the institute that I used to work in, basically we used to have formalin in a basic big bucket, okay, a big drum that we say. A big bucket was there and formalin was prepared over there. And we used to take formalin from there. So that is not a very good method because you are in coming in direct contact. Formalin ideally should be electronically pumped into an overhead tank and then it should be dispensed just like water is dispensed in a particular tap. So in that way only the formalin should be dispensed in a closed system. Again a formaldehyde meter should be kept in the gross room which helps to monitor the formalin vapors in the room so that they can be maintained at an acceptable level. Why this is introduced? Because as I told you, formalin is a carcinogenic agent. So it is very important that you safeguard your interest in this particular manner. Next, we are going to see the basic instruments that we are using okay, in the grossing room. So the basic instruments which are needed for grossing, it includes the plain forceps, long and short. Then we have toothed forceps, okay. Then we have the scalpel blades with handle, that is, you have the BP handle, okay. That is, the Bud Parker handle is there. Along with that, you are having the scalpel blades, okay. So, you have to fix, you should learn how to fix the, the, the scalpel blade with the BP handle or with the handle that you are using, and you should be very careful with that. I have seen residents while they are putting or while they are taking out, okay, they have injured some part of their body. So, you should be very careful in that. Then we are having knives of various length, okay. Then we have scissors. Now scissors can either be straight or sometimes you might need a curved scissor as well, okay. Now these scissors might be small as well as large and they might have pointed ends or they might have blunt ends. Then there should be a wire probe, very important when we are, you know, having a specimen of the whipples. So we have to secure the CBD duct. So for that we need a wire probe and so that we can introduce the wire probe inside, okay, so as to uh, you, uh, so as to secure the CBD, okay. Along with that, you need a ruler to measure. You need a paint brush to ink. Then a hand saw, electric saw, or a tooth extractor should be there in case you are getting orthopedic uh, specimens, okay, which you know in which you are getting a total limb, okay, or you are getting you know a particular uh, sample, you know, which whether you are having a bone. So, so basically, you might need a hand saw for that for that purpose. Now the instruments should be washed between grossing two specimens. So for example, first you have specimen, you know, you have grossed one specimen, for example, lipoma specimen. Or for example, not even lipoma, okay. First, for example, you have, uh, you know, you have just uh, uh, done the grossing of a specimen. For example, it was a sarcoma specimen, okay. It was a high grade sarcoma specimen. First, you have grossed that. Now without washing, you have gone to the next specimen and that next specimen, for example, was a lipoma. Okay, so if you first grossed a sarcoma or a tumor specimen, which is a high grade aggressive sarcoma, that is followed by, you know, grossing of a lipoma or a benign tumor. And if you do not wash your knife in between, so the tumor from here or the cells from here might be carried forward to this benign tumor. And this benign 
lipoma might be falsely reported as a high grade sarcoma so this can be disastrous both for the pathologist because he might lose his license and for the patient also okay and for the patient also so if you give a diagnosis to the patient okay who is having a very common benign lipoma and if you tell him that you have a sarcoma then you might you know the patient might sue you for the amount of mental trauma that you have put the patient through so this is very very important so to prevent that careful cleaning of the work surface and instruments with running tap water prevents the tissue carry over this is an important step because the tissue mix ups can prove to be disastrous not only for the pathologist but for the patients as well at the end of the day's grossing session when your grossing is complete the instrument should be thoroughly cleaned with soap as well as water so we used to keep some surf excel or some detergent powder and you know in some wooden area that we used to do we used to take the powder and we used to clean with the particular hands okay with the gloves on we used to clean like this we used to clean all the instruments nicely so that the next day when we come back to the grossing okay so everything is very neat and clear so this is something that you should do okay then regular sharpening is a mandatory function for example the knives and all the sharps that we are using it you know you should sharpen them else you will not be able to do the grossing properly okay so these are all the instruments as we can see these are the scissors the small and the larger scissors so these are the cassettes that you can see which are of various sizes then you have the knife okay then you can see this is the handle this is the blade over here you have the forceps there can be different types of forceps there are different types of blades are there then a ruler is a must okay then a big knife as you can appreciate over here is there okay very importantly you can see beneath okay this is the cutting board this is the cutting board okay so on top of this only you are keeping all the specimens and you are giving the sections okay so this is in general not a complete list and you might have different different you know instruments in different institutes so but the basic instruments these are the basic instruments that is there now comes the surgical requisition form okay so this is very 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 important because a lot of information you are going to receive from this particular requisition form and this is this is basically serving also as a legal document it is a legal document also so it's the documentation instrument so the requisition forms what does what all requisition form should include it should include number 1 the patient identification so remember the patient's full name should be there and the different um, and the different uh, you know and the different containers in which the specimens have come they should also contain the patient identification and you should match whatever requisition form whatever information on the requisition form should match with whatever information is there on the container containing the specimen the age and sex of the patient the age and sex of the patient has to be written clearly then a brief clinical history including any past history of biopsies or surgeries with relevant reports is very very important so brief clinical history means what that you should know that whether any previous biopsy was taken for the patient for example as a patient of a lung tumor or for the example the patient of a breast tumor so initially you know core needle biopsy was done and for example in the core needle biopsy okay it was reported as normal and for example it wasn't representative so they have uh, advised an excision by an excision biopsy wherein the entire swelling has been removed so in that particular situation okay in that particular situation you will have a history of the report of the past okay so that is very important so the clinical history of the patient is very important for how much duration the swelling was there whether it's a short history or long history whether clinically the particular surgeon is you know is the clinically he is thinking of a carcinoma or a benign tumor so that history is very important okay with relevant reports okay so the exact anatomical site from where the tissue was removed and the type of surgical procedure which was done whether a lumpectomy was done or a complete mrm modified radical mastectomy was done so all these things are very important it should be clearly mentioned now when we are going to deal with the individual organs in that situation in that situation we will see the different kinds of surgical specimens for a particular organ that is there okay so right now just understand the type of operation that was done whether an a lumpectomy was done or a biopsy in core needle biopsy was taken or a mrm was done so that has to be clearly mentioned then the radiological findings especially in case of bone and brain tumor is very important because for example whether it was a solid tumor or it was a cystic tumor what is the location of the tumor so that again plays a very important role 
the provisional diagnosis okay clinically whether the surgeon or the the referring clinician whether they are suspecting a particular tumor so for example if a tumor looks like a fibroadenoma then they will say query fibroadenoma if it is looking like a lipoma so from seeing you can say it is a lipomatous tumor if for example you have got a uterus sur cervix so over there you have multiple fibroids so they will write query fibroids so the provisional diagnosis also helps us okay then the doctor who is making the request so you should write down the designation of the doctor whether it is received okay from which department what is the designation of the particular doctor okay and the top of the form should have prominent slots now if the patient was already admitted in a particular hospital so the hospital registration number is a must along with that you will also have to give a separate pathology number okay that is the departmental pathological number that is there okay so these are all the information that should be present in the surgical pathology requisition form now there are certain policies in place as to what is the rejection policy you should be very very thorough with these policies the first step is to confirm that the patient identification information on the requisition form and the specimen container should match this is already something that i told you so whatever information is pre is present of the patient okay on the requisition form and the container they should match each other the number of specimen mentioned on the form should also tally with the number of containers received so for example they have written that we have sent three specimen so whether the three specimens are there or no you have to check before receiving because tomorrow okay the department or for example the relevant clinician might say no no we have sent three specimen you have lost so in that case you will fall into the legal dilemma and let me make it very clear for you people it doesn't matter if you are a resident okay legal action can be taken on residents also okay so you are also now obliged okay legal action can be taken on the dmlt students or the medical technologist that is working with you because all of you have some registration number so you are you know accountable for all of your action because you will see whenever you do the grossing they will say the grossing was received by so and so person in this day okay the grossing was carried out by so and so person if there is one first year resident one second year resident both of your name will be there whichever medical technologist was assisting you his name will be there whether any student was there that person's name will be there because all of you are legally accountable for that the pathology number generated should be affixed both on the requisition form as well as on all the containers so suppose you are giving a number as 1 2 3 4 5 this is the pathology registration number departmental number so this number should be given on the requisition form also and this number should be given on all the containers okay on all the containers this number has to be given again you should document the condition in which the specimen was received should be noted whether the specimen was fresh and unfixed or it was fixed in adequate or inadequate amount of formalin or whether the specimen was autolyzed this is very very important most of the times formalin is not available in the operation theater so what the surgeon does they will just give in the normal saline and they will send you okay so this is very important to note whether you can just smell it and you can understand whether it is no, is formalin or no a specimen may not be accepted if a major discrepancy is noted the rejection criteria should be clearly defined so for example if you can see that the requisition form has one uh, you know has has one particular name of a patient whereas the specimen has another name so straight away you cancel out if the name is matching but for example the age and sex is not matching again you should reject it and you should give reason of the rejection so the errors can include incorrect or no patient identification a mismatch in the number of the specimens mentioned in the form and those received and the request for investigation is not offered in the viral laboratory for example they have sent you they have they already have a diagnosis and for example right now they have sent you a particular specimen and they want you to carry out a uh, certain investigation like immunohistochemistry the major target is to do ihc so for example you should reject with a reason that you know ihc is not carried in our institute or in our organization a certain test they have requested which you do not carry out in your institute so you should write down that this in re relevant investigation is not available the specimens are then returned and all details including the reason of rejection is entered into a specially maintained rejection logbook why it is very important now sometimes for example in a in a, a government setup wherein you have loads and loads of sample so sometimes what happens that people tend to you know reject okay okay they they do they they tend to reject outright 
sometimes you might tell the patient party that this is the problem you correct this problem then you bring it back we will accept so such counseling is not done so that is why you have to maintain the rejection logbook so as to understand so ideally not more than one to two percent of the cases should be rejected if more than five percent cases are getting rejected that means there is a problem at the receiving end of the particular laboratory okay now the tissue fixation now we have already read in details about the fixation okay in our course of basic histopathology and tissue processing course in our post graduate md dnb pathology bundle so over here we are just going to see some of the basic points okay so good fixation of the tissue is a prerequisite for anatomical pathology or carrying out immunohistochemistry as well as for molecular pathology studies the importance of using sufficient volume of correctly prepared fixative on adequately exposed tissue cannot be overemphasized okay formalin is the most widely employed universal fixative it should be freshly prepared buffered and used in correct quantity i will teach you what is the meaning of buffered and how you can prepare okay small specimens are fixed after noting all the gross features namely the size shape color consistency hemorrhage necrosis etc big oncology resections are preliminary examined for the salient features and the external surface is then painted with marking ink now inking is not you know carried out routinely in all the hp in all the uh, colleges in india the inking is done but only the margins are inked but the whole specimen is, as such is not inked in all uh, you know histopathology labs across the country but the bigger specimens you know one day before you carry out the the grossing you should carry out the pre gross so the bigger uh, specimens they are cut open or they are bisected because you need to cut open the bigger specimens so as to allow the formalin to enter the specimen and to allow fixation because if the fixation is not done the specimen will be soft and you will not be able to cut that particular section you might not be able to take proper sections in case of huge tumor such as soft tissue sarcomas after preliminary gross examination the specimen is inked and then sliced in regular manner taking care to avoid distortion so let me just tell you one thing the basic if this is a particular specimen the basic idea of grossing okay according to the international standards what they do be any specimen they are going to take serial sections okay like this they are going to take serial sections and they are going to cut all the sections all the entire specimen will be divided like this and individual sections you know they are photographed and they are documented and they are kept in this particular manner now this process is very time consuming and you cannot do this for all these specimens especially in a country like india wherein you get so much gross specimens so basically over here we do not do that what we follow over here i am going to talk in the individual section but just i am telling you what is followed according to the who standards or according to the american or european standards okay so for any huge tumor okay we do give the slice but we do not completely break okay we might just you know for example if this is the entire tumor we might just go to this depth okay we might just cut up till this depth like the we, we will not cut it entirely now to facilitate the penetration by formalin and to prevent autolysis of the contiguous so this is one slice this is another this is third this is fourth so in between the two slices you just keep certain wads of cotton okay which has been soaked in formalin okay you keep wads of formalin soaked gauze or cotton wool they are neatly placed between the slices of tissue so that they are adequately fixed in formalin small specimens they are fixed 4 to 6 hours is enough for fixation whereas big specimens need up to 12 hours of fixation now excessively prolonged fixation can have deleterious effect on subsequent immunohistochemistry so you should keep this in your mind okay so how do you prepare 10% buffered formalin remember this is a favorite question of examiner in the yy so if you have done the grossing honestly in your institute then you might have faced a situation where the grossing solution has finished and you are asked to and you are preparing so first of all we have to add buffer there are two salts that we are adding around 1950 grams of disodium hydrogen phosphate anhydrous disodium hydrogen phosphate and around 1200 grams of sodium dihydrogen phosphate is added so these are the buffer these are actually uh, helping in buffering the formalin and they are helping to maintain the ph now around 30 liter of 40 percent concentrated formalin is taken now this is highly concentrated and we have to prepare 10 percent solution of this so to prepare that we are adding around nine times the volume of of tap water 
so to make the solution 10 percent okay so one part formalin and you are adding to that nine parts of water so total in 10 liters one part is formalin so you have created 10 percent okay 10 percent formalin now you have to make the total volume is around 300 liters so formalin what is the percentage 30 divided by 300 into 100 okay that is basically coming to 10 percent formalin okay now you should adjust the ph between 7.2 to 7.4 by adding these two salts and you should maintain such ph you should check the ph every day as acidic ph will lead to formation of formalin pigment so we have already read what formalin pigment is there and we have shown you also in the basic histopathology section as well okay so please go and see that section now uh, now talking about the photography okay if you look at the photography it's very easy ideally each specimen should be photographed the photographs they form an integral part of grossing and they also constitute the visual documentation now in our country it is not done for all the particular specimen it is not possible also but in foreign countries it is mandatory to have the photographs so they are cutting each and every specimen completely totally and they are taking you know in serials okay in serials in a contiguous manner they are taking photographs so the specimen should be photographed in both the fresh as well as in the fixed state the specimen is placed in a clean non reflecting surface which is of contrast color so for example you place it across a dark color a blue color or a green color which is in contrast with the specimen the, the, now remember whenever you are taking a photograph right now in india we are only taking photograph for example when we want to you know when we want to present a particular case a poster presentation or a case report has to be done or for example if you are presenting uh, that particular you know grossing seminar okay in that case you should always keep the specimen over here okay you should keep the container with the number over here the the we used to have the uh, you know uh, the the uh, we used to have the button or not the button we used to have the lid of the container that used to have the specimen number and a ruler is placed okay a ruler should be placed okay so that we can understand the specimen number should be there and the specimen should be there and the ruler should be there which is going to give an exact idea about the size of the particular tumor so the typed pathology number and the ruler preferably non-metallic and preferably paper printed and are kept alongside the specimen the specimen should be thoroughly dabbed dry before clicking the photographs as wet specimen will reflect light with resultant loss of details good artificial illumination or sunlight is preferred the use of flash is not recommended so these are some of the conditions that you should keep in mind while photographing a specimen as you can appreciate over here see this ruler has been kept over here this is the specimen this is the contrast background one thing that is not there that we should keep we should keep the lid of the particular thing with the pathology accession number for example one two three four five that should also be kept over here okay okay now the specimen orientation this is very very important unless you know the specimen orientation you are not able to judge the margins properly and you will not be able to relay the information that you have to to the uh, referring clinician or the surgeon so orientation of specimen so barring biopsies and curated specimen almost all specimens they need to be oriented okay it is very very important so some specimens they can be oriented easily because of their anatomy so if you are giving a gall bladder specimen so you know where is the neck where is the body where is the fundus right when you get a hemicolectomy again you know which part is which because of the natural anatomy but however certain specimens such as the breast lumpectomies or soft tissue excisions so for example a breast lumpectomy if it is provided without any orientation how do you know which is the medial aspect which is the lateral which is the superior which is the inferior which is the anterior which is the posterior so there is no way to understand that okay so that is why for any breast lumpectomy or any soft tissue excisions where there is no anatomic landmarks that needs to be oriented by the particular referring clinician or the surgeon so the most common way that we see is with the help of sutures so by stitching the sutures or wearing lens so a typical example is a breast lumpectomy okay wherein uh, they put the longest suture laterally medium suture medially and the short suture superiorly so let me show you with the help of an example over here you can see a particular you know breast swelling as you can appreciate a particular swelling is there so see how they have oriented so basically this particular the longest suture the long suture it is basically uh, marking your 
lateral border so this long suture is marking your lateral border whereas this medium suture as you can see this is the medium suture this is marking your medial border whereas this short suture as we can appreciate this is marking the super or the superior border okay so this is how you orient with the help of sutures okay the next way that you can orient is with the help of ink so the surgeon may orient a specimen by painting the surface of interest specifically example the capsule of a joint or a tissue around a vital blood vessel can be inked by the the particular surgeon to confirm or refute the presence of invasion by the tumor revised margins are often inked margins linked in the operation theater should be re-inked and reinforced by the pathologist at the time of grossing to ensure that the ink survives the processing tissue processing so as you can appreciate over here sometimes okay this is the breast specimen mrm specimen you can see the axillary tail also so over here for example they have marked okay they have seen okay so the superior border it is inked blue the inferior border is inked uh, yellow or green for example okay then the axillary tail this is the axillary tail so with this you can get the orientation of the lateral so this will be the lateral aspect this will be the medial aspect okay so this is how inking is also helping you this is how inking is also helping you in the orientation of the specimen Lastly, we can use the clips. In mammographically localized lesion, the specimen is x-rayed after it has been excised. Okay. The surgeon orients the specimen with the help of clips, which helps in orienting the specimen even on the radiographs. Example, you will put one clip laterally, two clips superior, three clips medial and four clips inferiorly. Okay. So, this is how you orient the specimen. Now, Many a times we see that the specimen has certain staples and certain add-on material is received along with the specimen. So, what you should do along with that? The specimens are often received with staples and with sutures, particularly the gastrointestinal and the lung specimen. So, attempts to individually remove these staples, it was going to tear that particular tissue. Hence, the tissue with the staple is neatly resected with the scissors, keeping as close to the staple line as possible subsequently the tissue next to this is sub submitted as the resection margin after applying ink care should be taken to ensure that tissue submitted for processing is free from any staples so let me show you how do we do it so for example this is the uh, uh, gastrointestinal specimen you can see that the particular staple has been made over here okay so what you have to do you have to cut and you have to remove this staple over here so you should cut it with the help of scissor as close to the staple line as possible and then this particular line okay where you have made the cut this is now acting as, as the resection margin it will act as the resection margin which should be inked okay this is how you should do it.